Okay, this video is uh, part two of three, and what we're doing is just doing a nice little introduction to polynomial functions. All right, so if you didn't catch my first one, uh, you might want to go ahead and watch that one before you watch this one. Just gives you a nice little um, introduction before we get to talking about um, the leading coefficient and the degree of a polynomial function. All right, um, one thing that you're going to want to do with polynomial functions is you're definitely going to want to be able to know what the end behavior looks like so that when we go to sketch these things you kind of even know what they're going to look like at least as far as end behavior goes before you get into actually having to graph it. All right, the leading coefficient and the degree will indicate your end behavior. All right, so there's some things that you have to memorize. All right, but once you get that memorized, then it, your end behavior is just going to be so quick and easy to find, you know, you're not going to be able to believe it. All right, now we've got two basic categories here. All right, your degree is either going to be an even degree or it's going to be an odd. Those are your only two choices. All right, now on the any even degree, what I like to tell uh, kids is to think about a parabola. Okay, so you're going to think parabola. All right, you've only got a couple different scenarios. Your parabola is either upright or it's upside down. So you really only have two choices for the way your end behavior is going to look like. All right, so everyone knows that um, a parabola, what a basic parabola looks like. All right, and they're always x squared. But when I, this, the same type of end behavior is going to apply, it doesn't make any difference. It could be an x to the fourth or an x to the sixth or an x to the eighth. As long as you have an even degree, they're all going to resemble your parabola. All right. Now, within that even degree, you're going to take a look at then your leading coefficient. And that coefficient then is either going to be positive or negative. So this kind of breaks up into two categories. All right. If I have a positive coefficient, you know, let's abbreviate this. All right. Or I have a negative coefficient. Only two possibilities here. Okay. Now, this positive coefficient. All right. If you think about a um, positive leading coefficient. If you think about the parabola, that means it's going to be an upright parabola. Okay, so that means your end behavior is going to be up, up. Okay, so let's do that end behavior. All right, if I had, you know, just a basic parabola going here, all right, I'd have a positive leading coefficient, even degree, so it would look like that. Now, any even degree, let's say an x to the fourth or an x to the sixth or an x to the eighth, all that's going to do to the graph is just going to add lots of hills and valleys in between. Okay, so, um, and then a little bit later, depending on how you get into it, you can kind of indicate how many turns you're actually going to have in the graph. But any other degree other than two that is even, like a four, six, and eight, there's just going to be hills and valleys in between. All right, now for this one, I indicate the end behavior as just up, up. That's the way I describe it in my class, and then I usually just let kids write you know, two little arrows up, up for end behavior. All right, now a negative leading coefficient. All right, well, we know what it does to a parabola. What it does to a parabola is it turns it upside down. So your end behavior is going to be down, down. All right, so a negative leading coefficient, even degree of 2 would look like an upside down parabola. Okay, now anything other than that, an x to the 4th, an x to the 6th, anything like that, it's just going to create more hills and valleys in there. All right. So some extra little hills and valleys in there, but your overall general shape of that's going to resemble the upside down parabola. All right, this then would have down down behavior, and I usually let my kids if they're just if the question just says state the end behavior, I let them write it like that down down, indicating what that end behavior is going to look like. All right, now for the odd degree, what I like to do is I like to tell kids to think about your cubic equation. All right, so think cubic equation. All right, I have all my students usually memorize um, all the basic um, shapes and family of functions that there are. And so an x to the third is one that we memorize. All right, um, again, if it's an odd degree, all right, it's all going, always going to look like your basic cubic equation with some hills and valleys in there. Again, you're going to have two categories because that leading coefficient is either going to be positive or negative. All right, so if I've got a positive coefficient, that would be one scenario. Negative coefficient is going to be my other one. Okay, so now if I want to think about my cubic equation, my right, basic cubic equation, no flips or anything, it's going to look like that. So it's going to have a down, up type of end behavior. Okay, so that's your basic cubic, so that would be an x to the third. 
but if it was any other odd number, an x to the fifth, an x to the seventh, an x to the ninth, the only thing that's going to do, again, is create some hills and valleys in there. All right, so just maybe something that looks like that. All right, lots of hills and valleys. The end behavior of it, though, does not change. So for this one, it's a down-up end behavior, and I let my students indicate it with just a couple little arrows down-up. All right, negative coefficient, all right, if you go back to that basic cubic equation and then what it does, it reflects it left to right, okay, so then that means instead of going, starting down here and going up, it's going to start at the top and come down, all right, from your basic family of functions. So I would have up behavior here, and I'd have some down behavior over here, all right, this is a standard cubic equation. Um, that has a negative coefficient, okay? Now, the only thing if I do an x to the fifth, seventh, or ninth, all right, this is just going to create some extra little hills and valleys in here. All right, so overall down behavior, or overall behavior then will be up, down. Okay, now this is definitely something you need to memorize, okay? And we're all, all basing it on the fact that you, you definitely know your parabola and you definitely know your cubic equation and what those graphs look like, all right? And then you're just gonna determine, okay, is it an even odd degree? If it's odd, then you're always gonna come over here and you're gonna go, okay, does it have a positive or negative leading coefficient? If it does, you've got your behavior memorized. Same thing with a parabola. Positive is going to look like an upright parabola. Negative leading coefficient then would make it look like an upside down one. All right, so let's go ahead and do two examples just real quick. All right, let's say just at the very, very beginning, the only thing they're going to ask you to do before they actually do the sketching or anything is they're just going to ask you to um, state the end behavior. Okay, so here I've got a polynomial uh, function right here and it is in standard form all right so that's kind of important let's where can I write that let's write it above it all right it is in standard form all right because how you determine your degree which is what I went over in the first video it matters whether it's in standard form or not since this is in standard form then all I have to do is look at the leading exponent on the leading term and that's going to determine my degree so for this one I have a degree of 8 and that's an even degree so right off the bat I know that this is going to kind of look like a parabola all right then I'm also going to look at that leading coefficient right there that leading coefficient LC leading coefficient is negative it's a negative 2 so it's negative so I, f I have the chart memorized even degree negative all right it's gonna look like an upside down parabola so my end behavior would be down down okay all right now on this polynomial function all right it is a polynomial function but it doesn't look like this one you gotta really pay attention to what it looks like this one is in factored form all right so definitely the first thing you need to look at is it in standard form or is it in factored form because the way you find the degree in factored form is different than when it's in standard form okay so in it's in factored form you take each of the exponents and add them up so my degree is going to be 3 plus 3 plus 1. Each one of those exponents I'm adding up. So 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 1 more is going to be 7. All right, so I have an odd degree. So I know then this is going to either look like a regular cubic or it's going to be flipped with lots of hills and valleys in between there. All right, now again, I still need to look at that leading coefficient. My leading coefficient in this case is 4, and that's a positive, so that means it's going to look like a regular cubic one. All right, maybe extra hills and valleys, but no flipping whatsoever. So then it's going to be a down up in behavior. Okay, so something that will definitely help when you start sketching your polynomial curves. All right, this was video two out of three. Okay, so you need to go back and watch the first one and then also watch the third one. You find um, out just a little bit more about your polynomial curves. Thanks for watching, and if you like it, go ahead and give me a like.